Hello everyone, this is our second example para sa kinds of simple interest. Ang formula lang when it comes to our interest simple is this equal to the principal times the rate times the time. Where yung i, eto yung tubo kapag tayo ay nanghiram or nagpahiram ng pera. And then principal, eto yung amount na pinahiram or hiniram natin. And then we have our rate of interest. Kapag mas mataas yung rate natin, mas mataas yung tubo. Kapag mas mababa yung rate, mas mababa yung magiging tubo natin. And then lastly, multiply natin siya dun sa ating time. This should be in years. Kaya makikita natin yung pagbabago sa time natin as we consider our kinds of simple interest. Meron tayong dalawa, we have exact simple interest and ordinary simple interest. When we are talking about exact simple interest, nagbabago lang naman yung formula ng time. Yung denominator natin, we are considering 365 days in a year. So this is for exact simple interest. And then kapag kinumpara natin siya dito sa ating ordinary simple interest, meron lang tayong kinoconsider na 360 days in a year. Kaya kapag yung nasa denominator is 365, then we have our exact simple interest. Tapos kapag we are dividing by 360, then that is an ordinary simple interest. Ito yung pagkakaiba ng dalawa. Then let us proceed with our classifications. Meron tayong actual days or actual time. And also approximate days or approximate time. Ito naman yung nagbabago, yung nasa numerator ng ating simple interest. Itong din natin, ito yung pag-ita nung dalawang araw na kinoconsider natin sa ating interest. Kapag kumukuha tayo ng actual days, so this is exact interest, actual days. So ordinary naman, we have our ordinary interest and then actual days. Tinutukos talaga natin yung araw sa pag-ita nung dalawang dates na kinoconsider natin kung ano yung mga buwan na merong 31 days, 30 days, o kaya naman kung February, 28 or 29 days. Pero kapag approximate days, eto, this is exact interest, approximate days, yung nasa baba, ordinary interest, approximate days, hindi na natin titignan kung ano yung mga buwan na merong 30 or 31 or less days, nag a na lang tayo na merong 30 days sa loob ng isang buwan. Kaya siya approximate, nagtatansya tayo. And then by the way, as a reminder lang, pagdating sa pagtutuos ng ating actual days, For this video, hindi natin isasama yung unang araw. That is the common practice when computing for the actual days. Now, let us have our example. This is our given. June invested 20,000 pesos on November 30, 2009 to March 1, 2010 at 14.5% interest rate. The question is how much will he earn and how much is the final amount by using approximate and actual time for ordinary and exact interest. As we observe our given date, katapos yan sa ng November, tapos magtatapos tayo sa umpisa ng March, magagamit agad natin yung konsepto na sinabi ko kanina na hindi natin isasama yung unang araw. Para makompute natin to, let's start with our approximate days. Kunin muna natin yung approximate number between November 30 and March 1. Again, na kay November 30 na tayo, ito yung katapusan. And then sa approximate, we are assuming 30 days when it comes to 1 month. Since ito yung unang araw natin, hindi siya kasama, so tatalo na tayo dun sa ating susunod na araw, which is December 1. That is our first consideration. Kaya we will be starting our computation at December. Since approximate siya, i-assume natin na merong 30 days sa lahat ng buwan natin. And then hanggang kay March tayo, so let me write down the months. You have our January and then February, tapos you have our March. Then for January and February, assuming 30 days in a month, tapos kay March, hanggang kay March 1 lang tayo, hindi kasama yung first day pero kasama yung last day natin. Kaya maglalagay tayo ng 1 dito, then we add our approximate days or approximate time is just equal to 91 days. And then for actual days naman, so let me write down actual. Same consideration, hindi kasama yung first day, pero tignan natin yung November natin, baka meron tayong 31. Ang technique natin na gagamitin para malaman natin kung meron ilang araw sa isang buwan is gagamitin lang natin yung kamay natin. I also have a separate video para malaman natin kung ilang araw meron sa isang buwan gamit yung technique na to. If you want to learn it ng mas mahaba, then check mo lang yung video na yun. Pero dito ang gagawin lang natin, magbibilang lang tayo ng buwan. Starting sa ating pointing finger, we have our January, kasama yung space in between, February, March, April, May, June, and then July. 
Pagdating natin sa dulo, babalik tayo, uulit tayo sa ating dulo, dito tayo sa ating August. The next phase, September, October, tapos we have our November. Ang technique lang, kapag tumama tayo dun sa finger natin or dun sa meron nakaumbok na buto, we have 31 days. Pero kapag tumama tayo dun sa space na nasa pagitan ng ating daliri, so nandito, dito, tsaka dito, then yung mga buwan na yun ay merong 30 days, pero kapag ka February, 28 or 29. Since dun sa pagbibilang natin, since yung November natin ay tumama dun sa pagitan, meron lang tayong 30 days. Kaya 30 na yung dulo ng ating November, ang susunod na araw ay December 1 na, kaya hindi natin i-consider yung last day ng November which is 30. Kaya same consideration, mag-uumpisa na tayo sa ating December for our actual days. Then again, this is our November, talon tayo sa ating susunod na buwan, we have our December, tumama siya dito, so we have 31 days sa ating December. Let us write it down, December is 31 days. Tapos, since dulo na to, balik tayo sa January, magumpisa ulit tayo dito sa una nating bilang. For our January, since tumama siya dito sa merong buto na nakaumbok dito sa ating daliri, so we will be having 31 days pagdating ng January. Then, para sa February, so nasa gitna siya, kaso nga lang special ang month ng February, kasi meron lang tayong 28 days, pero kapag leap year, meron tayong 29 days. Kaya ang titignan natin ay yung buwan, yung February natin ay nasa 2010. Ang technique lang para malaman natin kung leap year, kapag divisible by 4 yung taon, kapag walang remainder, kapag nag-divide tayo by 4, then leap year siya. Meron tayong 29 days by February. Kaso by 2010, kapag dinivide natin siya by 4, meron tayong remainder na 2. Kaya ang 2010 ay hindi leap year, meron lang tayong 28 days. And the next month, yung March, although tatama siya dito, kaso magtatapos na tayo by March 1. Kaya ang kailangan lang natin ay yung unang araw ng March, so we have our 1. Then i-add lang natin sila, we have our 31 plus 31 plus 28 plus 1. Then ang actual days lang natin is also 91 days. Since nagkataon na pareho yung ating approximate at actual days, mas magiging maikse yung ating computation. With this, pwede na tayo mag-compute ng ating ordinary and exact interest, tapos pareho lang naman yung ating approximate at actual time. And then after that, kailangan din natin i-compute yung ating final amount. So let's start our computation. Our ordinary interest, hindi ko na isasama yung ating approximate at actual kasi pareho lang naman sila. This is equal to the principal times the rate, tapos yung days natin. So let me write down D. All over, kapag ordinary, ang gagamitin natin ay 360. Tapos for our exact interest, this is equal to same, principal times the rate. Tapos yung time natin, same approximate and actual day. So di na lang din, this is over. Kapag exact ang denominator natin, we are considering 365 days in a year. Then balikan natin yung ating given for our principal amount and rate of interest. We have our 20,000. Ito yung invested amount, this is our principal, tapos our rate of interest is 14.5%. So let us use those values, baba tayo sa ating computation. This is equal to our principal amount of 20,000, tapos yung rate natin na 14.5% in decimal form, that is equal to 0.145. Kasi kapag ka, tinignan natin yung ating percentage, 14.5, para maging decimal siya, uusod lang tayo ng dalawang, decimal places, kaya this is equal to 0.145. Kaya tayo nakarating dito, then our days, we have 91, eto yung na-compute natin, this is over 364 ordinary simple interest. Then as we compute, kapag minultiply natin, etong nandito, 20,000 times 0.145 times 91 over 360, that is just equal to 733.5. 0.6 pesos. Then tuloy na natin yung ating computation para sa ating exact simple interest. This is equal to, ang principal natin is 20,000 times the rate of 0.145. And then kapag minultiply natin siya dito sa ating time, we have number of days is 91, either approximate or exact. And then this is over 365. Upon computation, our exact simple interest is just equal to 
0.01 pesos. Ngayon, na-compute na natin siya. Finally, we only have to get our final amount. Para makuha natin kung magkano na yung pera na makukuha at the end, ang gagawin lang natin is our F, maturity or final values is equal to, kukunin natin yung ating principal, tapos i-add natin yung ating interest. In this case, lagay tayo ng subscript para alam natin na this is ordinary, kaya this is F sub O and then I sub O. Then this is equal to, ang principal amount natin is 20,000, tapos ang interest natin for ordinary, ang na-compute natin ay 733.06. Kaya finally, our amount using ordinary simple interest is just equal to 20,733.06. 0.6 pesos. This is our final answer for ordinary simple interest. Then we apply the same for our exact simple interest. Kukunin natin yung ating principal amount. I-add lang natin yung ating exact interest. Kaya this is equal to 20,000 principal amount plus exact interest. We have 723.01. Then as we add yung dalawa, yung ating final amount using our exact simple interest This is just equal to 20,723 pesos and 1 cent. This is our final value or maturity value. Again, napaikli lang yung computation natin kasi pareho yung ating approximate days tsaka actual days. Pareho silang 91. Pero in case na magkaiba silang dalawa, then we have to compute yung approximate days tsaka actual days separately kay ordinary and exact interest. Madali lang naman yung formula, kailangan lang natin maging maingat, lalo na sa pagkocompute ng number of days between two dates, kasi kapag kamali na tayo dun, magiging mali na yung computation natin ng interest. I hope you have learned something. Thank you for watching. Hello everyone, I am Sir Kenneth of STEM Teacher PH. Kung nakatulong sa'yo itong video na to, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and click the notification bell para updated kayo sa ating uploads. Bye!